Welcome to the Defense and Aerospace Report. I'm Fagum Radian here in Orlando, Florida, where we are covering the very tail end of the Air Force Association's annual Air Warfare Symposium. This year's topic, Command and Control and Fusion Warfare. Our coverage here is sponsored by DRS uh, Technologies. And uh, we've got with us a very good, uh, very old friend of mine, uh, Dr. Mark Lewis, who was the former Air Force Chief Scientist, but also uh, now with the Institute for Defense Analyses, because uh, you don't just analyze one well, thing at a time. <laughs> Um, I wanted to ask you, uh, Mark, uh, that, you know, on hypersonics, it's almost, uh, you know, we're always sort of on a cusp. Mm -hmm. You know, folks were saying like, oh, you know, in X number of years we'll have hypersonics, the X number of years passed, you know, we still don't have hypersonics. Mm -hmm. But there seems now to be a groundswell about the importance of the system. Obviously, potential adversaries are also making their investment in it. Mm -hmm. You've studied this field for a very, very long time. Mm -hmm. How long before we have fielded operational hypersonic systems? So. How long before we have hypersonic systems? I would argue that it's not a technology issue, it's a programmatic issue. So let's step back. In 2013, the United States Air Force flew the X-51 vehicle. It was a hypersonic system, a hypersonic X-plane, experimental platform, flew at better than Mach 5, so it was in the hypersonic realm, and demonstrated everything that we've been saying hypersonic systems can do for, for many years. Um, now, X-51 wasn't an operational system, but it was clearly leading us on the path towards an operational system. Um, so how long? Well, it's, it's, it's really most of the technologies that we needed were there, and that's in 2013. So it really is a matter of operational timelines versus developmental timelines. Now today we could do much better than X-51. Uh, the folks who built X-51, especially the, the folks who did the engine, have learned a lot in the intervening four years. And that would enhance the system, uh, make it more practical, make it more operational. But still, I would argue, readily achievable. What are the vast range of systems aside from strike that you would want to have hypersonic? I divide hypersonics into three different categories, three different bins. So first, there are the hypersonic weapons. That includes things that are powered by air-breathing engines, engines that use oxygen from the atmosphere. Also, things that are rocket-powered that glide to a target at hypersonic speeds. That's one category. Second category, uh, aircraft. Uh, people sometimes talk about global-reaching hypersonic aircraft. Frankly, it's hard to make a practical case for those. But uh, uh, ISR assets, uh, uh, fast, fast responsive uh, sensing platforms, I think, very, very uh, doable and practical. Obviously, those would be reusable, so require a little bit more technology than the weapons, but still achievable. The, the holy grail of hypersonics, we often say, is uh, access to space, a vehicle that could fly up into, uh, through the atmosphere to orbit, operating more like an airplane. That's a longer way off. We tried to do that with the National Aerospace Plane back in the late 1980s and realized it was a bridge much too far. Um, today, though, I think we can envision a future where that's, that, that is part of the mix of, of technologies we use to get into space. Uh, and I'm saying this to a man whose screensaver is an XB-70, mm -hmm. uh, which is obviously the best airplane in the world as far as you're concerned. Yes. And what are your top three? Go on. Okay, my top three airplanes. XB-70, number one. Uh, an incredibly audacious, audacious airplane, an airplane that could fly, you know, supersonic speeds, incredibly powerful, used amazingly sophisticated aerodynamics. That's number one. Number two, the X-15 rocket plane. X-15 set the standard for an experimental plane. Uh, flew throughout the 1960s, 199 flights. Uh, they took risks. They they, they, they push the state of the art and they learn so much. And then, of course, number three is the SR-71, the venerable Mach 3 plus spy plane. Um, again, an incredibly audacious aircraft designed in the 1950s using engine concepts that were just absolutely remarkable. Even by today's standards, they're absolutely remarkable. Uh, hypersonics that our adversaries are doing. Talk to us briefly about what Russia, China, and others are working on in the hypersonic realm how you would categorize their progress, and could they actually beat us to some hypersonic systems before we field them? So it, we, we, we know of significant activities around the world. Uh, you mentioned Russia and China. The Chinese have been quite bold about their ac activities in hypersonics, uh, both in, and, and in fact, across the board. So their, their universities, for example, are doing a lot of work in fundamentals of hypersonics. Um, could they actually beat us? Um, I. Given that I think the biggest challenges are programmatic and mo programmatic and money, not technology, uh, I think the answer is yes. And we recently completed a study under the auspices of the National Academies of Sciences to look at that very issue, uh, defending against uh, high-speed systems. And we can definitely concluded that uh, other countries are developing these technologies and could pose a pose a significant threat. And in the thirty seconds we have left, <laughs> old joke. Uh, so very quickly. Star Trek or Star Wars, and which Star Trek if Star Trek? Oh, Star Trek in the original series. 
excellent, a man of Thank superior you. tastes. Thank you. There's this like new generation stuff. Apparently, yeah, there was some other the go go go. You know, the young kids today. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> They're just but, out of control. But I always ask the question: If you were on the bridge of a spaceship, would you want it to be commanded by James T. Kirk or anyone else? And the answer is obvious. It is obvious. Thank you. Live long and prosper. Thank you. <laughs> See you, Mark. Thanks right. very much. <laughs>